Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I'm going to review these rattlesnake pole beans. I sowed these rattlesnake pole beans on your suggestion. I've been looking for a good bean and so I sowed them in my spring garden and they came up. Here they are as young little plants looking all healthy. And uh, yeah, they just took off like wildfire. I had to build a trellis for them and they took off on the trellis. And just like a pole bean ought to, they climbed with real vigor all the way to the top in no time. So, being all lush and green like this, they started blossoming, the bees came around, they pollinated, and look what we got. We got some wonderful beans. Now, this is supposed to be a string bean. It is a uh, mild string bean. The string is supposed to be not that intense, or that strong. I found, as you'll see, that these do have strings in them if they get big. But I'm very pleased with this bean, and I hope you enjoyed the video. We're going to cook some up and take some time to evaluate how they taste because that's what I'm after. I'm after a good tasting bean. So, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, please leave me a comment below and let me know what other kind of reviews you'd like to, to see on my channel. And I hope you enjoyed this rendition of Soggy Bottom Boy's uh, Man of Constant Sorrow. I almost mastered it, but not quite. All right, let's get to beans. You guys told me to try this snake, this rattlesnake pole bean. And I harvested a, about a pound of them. And look at those. That's nice, huh? Nice and speckled. This is supposed to be, according to all of you, the best green bean there is. So I'm going to cook some up and we'll try them. First things first, I'm going to boil some water, put a pinch of salt in there. Oh, I'm out of salt. I'd say that's a pinch. Look at that. Awesome. All I'm going to do here is cut the ends off. These are said to not have any strings unless they get really big. So let's see. No, not much string. So what I'm going to do is just cut the end off, the, uh, <clears throat> the stem end. And we're going to boil these for just a little while. There's a big one. Let's see if it has a a string. That one's got a string. Not much of a string. We'll see. We'll see when we eat them. I've never had these before, so I'm just going to cook the big ones and the little ones, and we're going to see what the difference is, if there's any big deal with strings or not. They better be good, because if they're not, man, you guys, you guys are leading me astray. That's about the size where I don't expect to see any kind of a a string. I'm going to cut up a medium onion. This is a white onion from the garden. I'm going to cut this up into bite-sized chunks. Doesn't have to be real fine. We're going to saute these, get them nice and transparent. There we go. Now we're going to take a shallot. I've got a big one here, and that's probably bigger than I need, but I like shallots. I mean, who doesn't like shallots? All right, so there's our onions and shallots. Here's our beans over here. All right, I've got some olive oil in my Dutch oven here, my cast, cast iron pot. I've got my water boiling. So, let's put our beans in our boiling water. Boil them. Got our cast iron heating up. Let's saute our onions and shallots. You can see that even with just a few minutes of boiling, the purple spots go away and you're left with some very bright, very bright green beans. They're starting to get a little soft now. That's what we want. We want these to get soft. Soft as you like them. My family kind of likes these beans soft. We want to get these cooked down, sweated down until everything is nice and translucent. I like crunchy onions, but Nobody else in my household likes crunchy onions, so we will make sure we don't have crunchy onions. Getting some color on your food is a good idea too. Color means that you're starting to get some caramelization happening. I've got some brown on the edges of some of my onions and shallots, and that's just what I'm looking for. Keep cooking these until 
I like the color of them there. The transparency and the brown edges, that equates to good food. Now I like to cook on high, high heat, very much like stir fry or cooking with a wok. But with cooking on high heat, you have to keep your food moving. I got time to cook on medium. All right, this is looking good. I'm going to turn the heat off there and wait for the beans to catch up. Because we're going to have to cook this a little bit longer with the beans in it. This cast iron will hold on to that heat. That will keep cooking in there even with the heat off. The beans are looking great. Okay, our beans are right where I want them. I'm just going to strain out the water here. Some cold water on them. I grew that, y'all. Look at that. Wow. Now, you're supposed to dry them off. I don't mind a little moisture in there. We're going to bring this over and put them right into the onions. All right, here we go. Heat back on. Beans in. Now we're going to kind of stir fry this for a little while. The recipe calls for a little bit of soy sauce, just a dash, a quarter of a teaspoon, and that's just to give it some umami, maybe some salt. We do need a little salt in here, so I'm just going to put a just a dash in there. I'm going to add some garlic powder. The recipe calls for garlic salt. I don't have any garlic salt. I'll put some garlic powder in, just a dash coming out really slow so make sure we get some garlic in there could use fresh garlic I suppose and I'm going to put some salt in here too since I'm not using garlic salt there we go about a half a teaspoon or so and we're just gonna stir fry these beans and onions together until everything looks good smells good and hopefully tastes good we'll see looking good. Now if you start getting down to where you're sticking to the bottom of your pan and things are looking a little dry, just toss a little moisture in there. You could use water, a little stock, a little broth. Broth and stock are always better than water. But hey, if you just need to get some steam generated, throw some water in there. That's what I'm going to do. Just a little bit. Tablespoon, maybe a little more. Let all these flavors blend together. Y'all, this, this looks really good. If this bean is half as good as you say it is, you've won me over. Well, how do we know it's done? You try one. Mmm. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay, that's good. The sweetness of the onions just coats the whole thing. The bean, it's perfect. Turn that heat off, they're done. And there was a little bit of a string, but it, that was a pretty medium sized bean. There was a little bit of a string, but it wasn't that much of a nuisance. And I just ate the string. It was good. Man, what a good bean. I gotta say, I've never grown green beans that I really raved about or really enjoyed. This one though, rattlesnake pole bean. Wow, what a heavy producer. It's thriving in the heat. It's early summer, we're in the middle of a drought and I've got a pound of beans sitting on my stove that are absolutely outstanding. This is delicious. Look at that, piping hot, delicious beans. Well, let's eat. Well, let's try. Rattlesnake pole beans. There's a medium sized one. Mmm. Got a string, but it's a tender string. Mmm. Wow, this would be great with a little bacon in it. But right here, just shallots, onions, a little bit of garlic powder, powder just a touch, and the green beans. That's all you need. Wow, this is good. Mm. All right, call me converted. This is my new favorite bean of all time. The rattlesnake pole bean. Wow, this is delicious. Mm. 
the little ones don't have a string at all. Little guys like that. Wow. Man, so satisfying. Better than any bean I've bought at the store. Mm. I've been very disappointed with um, the beans that I've grown. The Kentucky pole bean, the blue lake, all the classics. Um, they've never really satisfied because they haven't produced as heavily as I wanted. Um, and they were a lot of work. You had to string them. And um, the bush beans just don't produce enough. you got to plant so many of those bushes. These guys, man, these are prolific. This is two harvests worth, about a pound. And it's the first harvest. And there's more blossoms on there, a whole lot more blossoms out there. So I'll be eating these beans as long as those plants can stand the heat. And I guess that's what we got to see. Will they survive the summer? Got some rain coming this weekend. We need rain, so we'll see how they do. Man. Mm. Now that we've had a chance to cook and try these beans, I have some observations. These beans, little guys like this, are perfect. Small ones to medium size, they're perfect. But you get any larger than this, and you get a string. So I'd say something like that, about four inches long and a little skinny guy. That's ideal. There might be a hint of a string, but not much. I'm looking for beans I don't have to sit there and string. This one right here, when they start to plump up and you can see that there are beans inside the pod, yeah, you know you're gonna have to get that string out of there. Look at that, there's a string. So, you know, it's a string bean. That's just life, and I think it's, you know, it's what grandma used to do, string the beans. Now that's perfectly edible, and you're not gonna have to deal with that string. Um, I cooked them all without stringing them and I had to pull the strings out of the heavier beans, but it was worth it. It was a really delicious bean. I'm sold. These uh, rattlesnake pole beans, man, they're delicious. They're really worth growing. And I think this is my new staple bean for my garden. Absolutely fantastic. Excellent bean right there. Fantastic. Impressive. And look at all the beans I'm going to get because we've got these blossoms all over these vines. So, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. What I'm trying to do is find things that I like to eat. I don't want to grow things I don't like to eat. You know, it's, it's fun to grow some mysterious and exotic stuff sometimes. Maybe a weird tomato you've never had. And... But you know what? You're more prone to take care of your plants and to tend your garden and weed and, and, and do all the things you need to do to get a harvest of something you really, really want to eat. And so that's what I've done here. I've been looking forward to tasting these beans because I anticipated there would be a crop that I want to grow again and again. And that's what it's turned out to be. These beans are absolutely amazing. Rattlesnake pole beans. If you need a good source for rattlesnake pole beans, check out Seeds for Generations. Use my link below in the description box and you will uh, help support our channel. So there we go, cooking video again, uh, harvest to table, and it couldn't have gone better. Thanks for joining us today on Black Umbo Southern Gardening. We'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening and happy cooking. Bye-bye.